For the past week, the third planner recession has been in the headlines of almost every Chinese media and many foreign media outlets as well. What exactly is it and what messages does the session send? First of all, it's a major meeting held roughly once every five years, where top party officials map out the general direction of China's long-term development goals in all aspects. Further deepening reform comprehensively to advance Chinese modernization is the major focus this year. As one of the biggest contributors to global growth, a modernized China can mean a lot of opportunities and solutions. How the country plans to do that? From an economic angle, it's mainly about creating a transition through reforms from old growth drivers to new growth drivers, namely technology and innovation. The importance of such drivers is demonstrated with the phrase repeatedly emphasized in economic policies, new quality productive forces, which refer to advanced productivity freed from traditional economic growth modes. Based on what we've learned from the third plenum, this is exactly where many of the future reforms will be centered about. As one of the major priorities stated in the communique, the country would improve the institutions and mechanisms for fostering new quality productive forces in line with local conditions. And all advanced productivity should go towards it. Emerging industries like electric vehicles, renewable energy, artificial intelligence, big data, and telecommunications are very likely to benefit further, supported by stronger reform measures by the central and local governments. What the plenum also told us is that a high-standard socialist market economy will provide an important guarantee for Chinese modernization. The country will consolidate and develop the public sector and in the meantime, encourage and support the non-public sector. This sends a reassuring message that entities under all forms of ownership can compete in the market on an equal footing. Apart from the role of the market, foreign investors might also be concerned about the consistency of the policy of opening up. Rest assured, the country has made it clear that it remains committed to the basic state policy of opening to the outside world. Some favorable policies that could demonstrate the party's commitment include wider opening in areas like telecommunication, the internet and education. More convenient measures for people from outside the mainland to live, receive medical services and make payments. The party sets a deadline for all the reform tasks laid out in the resolution to be completed by the time the PRC celebrates its 80th anniversary in 2029. This shows its utmost resolution to build China into a great modern socialist country in all respects by mid-century. From the latest statistics, we can already sense a new round of productivity revolution happening in the country. First of all, the GDP growth for the first half hit 5%, with high-tech manufacturing being a highlight, which saw an 8.7% increase. If we break it down, the output of 3D printing equipment, electric vehicles, and integrated circuits all increased impressively. Despite a mild slowdown in Q2, the basics of Chinese economy remain strong, and the new growth drivers are emerging. The IMF also showed confidence in the world's second biggest economy, as it raises its forecast for China's 2024 growth from 4.6% in April to 5% now. The importance of Chinese modernization extends beyond borders, as it also paves the way for addressing global challenges through innovation-driven solutions. Over four decades ago, the Third Plenum in 1978 adopted the policy of reform and opening up, which resulted in decades of economic boost that laid the foundation of what the country has become today. It's no surprise that this meeting will prove to be another milestone event in history that will navigate the path of China for decades to come.